Lynn, I see that much of Intel's presence here at IBC is around Visual Cloud. What does that mean and why does it deserve this special focus? So Visual Cloud has a couple important concepts. First, I'll tell you what the workloads are. You will have seen a lot of these, media processing and delivery. So a good example would be Netflix. Then you have media analytics, really doing meta tagging so you can search what movie had Scarlett Johansson in it and which movie has Angelina Jolie in it. Also cloud gaming, being able to play things remote. Fortnite is a great example, as well as cloud graphics and then immersive media, so AR and VR. Those five workloads sound really complicated, but they just boil down to four core functions. Encode, decode, inferencing, and rendering. The other really important key with Visual Cloud is it's processed on cloud architectures, it goes over a network, and then it's consumed remotely. So you have to think about an end-to-end -end system design instead of just one point or another point. Isn't Visual Cloud just about adding more GPUs into the mix? Visual Cloud is really interesting and diverse because many of these workloads are complicated or serial enough that they need a different kind of architecture. So we are looking at more heterogeneous solutions, the combination of a CPU with an FPGA or the combination of a fixed function accelerator with a smaller, less power oriented CPU being able to leverage the network edge instead of being a way back in the hyperscale cloud. There's a lot of different ways that you can do system design points. And so it's not just one answer and we have a hammer, let's go find the nails. It's really about we have the whole toolbox. We want to make sure we work with customers to give them the right solution for what kind of service and service experience they want to deliver. Cloud often means generic or abstracted from hardware. Is there value in software optimization? For cloud, the value of software optimization and starting there is huge because the more you can optimize software on the most common infrastructure that cloud has, the faster they can deploy and the more agile and efficient their infrastructure is. So for them, taking advantage of the infrastructure already deployed and then only worrying about something that would be hardware accelerated later is much more efficient and gives them a better service quality. How does Intel drive innovation for Visual Cloud? I see there's a lot of technology focus on open source. So an exciting announcement that we are doing this week is open sourcing of what we call scalable video technology. It's an encoder library core and designed initially for HEVC and it's very, very flexible. 13 different presets you can run on Xeon D, which is a lower end part, one full channel. You can run all the way up until Xeon Platinum, two channels of 8K video. So a lot of flexibility between 1080, 4K, and 8K, all in software. We're also starting an AV1-based project that's more of a community contribution where we will be contributing that exact same code but formatted for AV1, and we're welcoming the rest of the industry to join us in innovating around AV1. Another thing that we've had in the open source community for many years is an open source Intel rendering framework where you can do ray tracing and rendering in software if you have available CPU cores. And many of the studios have been using this for very, very high quality animation. And what would Intel like to see happen in the broadcast and content ecosystem? One of the problems that many broadcasters or even content owners have talked with me about is the fact that they have different formats. For example, they will film a motion picture and it would be wonderful if they could solve two different problems. One being, how do I automatically make that content I invested in an experience, an immersive experience, whether VR or something you can interact with with augmented reality. The second problem that many of the broadcasters have talked about is trying to get the talent into the same location if you have to refilm a scene, you end up having to fly people back all over the world. So is there a way that technology can help solve that problem where you have the volumetric video instead of having to fly physical people all over the place? So those are just two examples of problems that many of the broadcasters and other content creators are looking at solving with things like Visual Cloud. Lincomp, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.